What is going on, everybody? We are back again for a brand new episode of Behind the Visor. I'm one of your hosts here, Stavros Katzentonis, current DB for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. We got my guy Luca back for another brand new episode. I think what everyone is wondering is, do we have another hot shot like Joel DeBlanco on today's episode? Um, unfortunately, no, not today. But we do have very many or a lot of a lot of interviews coming in the imminent future but uh yeah Luca, what, do you, what did you think about that interview we had with joel last week and uh what are your what are your kind of thoughts from there i mean i think there might be a uh, behind the visor bump that we we got to start talking about that was uh for a linebacker i think he was first in the three cone drill and r- ran a force uh, sub four six forty so um our guy joel i think is going to be hearing his name within the first couple picks come uh, april 30th yeah that uh I didn't think he was going to run sub four, six, honestly. And this isn't like me. This isn't a bad thing. This is just like most linebackers usually don't run that fast. And you see a guy that's coming up from, you know, the U S where the speed isn't really as, as like, you know, cause the U S linebacker speed stuff is a little bit different, right? Cause you're usually bigger body types and yeah, those guys still run fast, but to see him put a four or five out there and kind of put the CFL critics to, you know, hush mode if you want to call it that way to say hey you know what I can come up here and I can play sideline to sideline uh that was a really cool thing to see from me you know watching it live super happy for Joel and um you know I think he's I like I said I think he'll be a top five pick uh you know coming in the next month here and you know I think he's one of the one of the only not only guys but one of those guys you know a handful of guys in this draft that is going to be able to make an impact this year as a starter. I think, you know, this is that that's my that's my I guess uh early early approach to I think what's going to happen for him this year. I think I could definitely see him taking the field as a starter this year, especially if he's a top draft pick and maybe that's something we need to get into a little bit later today, Lucas, is something I just thought of of just draft picks in general and you know, maybe ha- why it's different from the NFL, maybe how, how it could change in the future. But without, I guess, getting too far into that, uh, we just wanted to remind all of you to uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel, the actually exclusive place where we have the video version of this. Obviously, if you are driving your car, please do not watch this on video. Make sure you listen it to on audio, uh, wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, Google. I mean, shoot, it's, it's just about everywhere. So, uh, yeah. Again, make sure you guys subscribe to that and and tune in every week on Thursdays. We got awesome shows lined up each week. So uh, yeah, Luca, what do we what do we got next? Kind of on the uh, on on the order. Well, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Joel's kind of wicked combine performance, and I, I'm with you. I wasn't expecting him to run that fast, mainly because he he tempered expectations when he came on and chatted with us. He he said he's he's more downhill and he's probably not the fastest linebacker you've ever seen. And then he goes and runs, runs a four five, nine. I think, I think Joel was sandbagging a little bit, but speaking of, of the CFL combine, I wanted to chat about a couple, a uh, couple Canadian guys who, who we might see making an impact in the CFL, similar to how you mentioned Joel would. Um, we'll start off with uh, Benjamin Labrose out of McGill. Uh, he played at Syracuse and this guy, he, he's an athletic freak. I don't really know how else, how else to describe it. He 38, five vert four, five, one forty, and an 11 foot broad jump. Like those numbers are, those numbers would, would open eyes kind of at any level. Um, so, I mean, as a DB, he's obviously a DB. Uh, how does that compare to the best kind of CFL uh, defensive backs? Like, is, is he going to come in and kind of be an elite athlete at the position right away or, or is that pretty standard for for the position group in the CFL? Yeah, you have to think, and and with with his kind of background, I think the, traditionally the CFL like Canadian DB position has always been the free safety. You start to see, you start you started to see it kind of I guess evolve a little bit more with guys like you know Tyrell Ford, um, you know Godfrey Onyeka, like those type of guys that have come in um, that are pure speed guys that can play corner i mean shoot i think tyrell ford ran what four four two uh last year or, or two years ago at the cfl combine yeah it was it was low i think i almost saw like four four oh laser on one of his times so I, I i don't know um i know he's fast but i think that position starting to evolve with 
just uh, you, you obviously started the grassroots of football in Canada and how much better it's gotten over the last few years. And, and that show, that's really showing. I mean, you got so many guys that are playing down in the U.S., um, and having success they're not just playing and on the roster like these guys are out there being stars down there so uh with labros it's no different right he started out his career at syracuse um in 2020 and 2021 and i think he like was the starter there ended up coming back um but no doubt nevertheless i think he was touted as like one of the best cornerback prospects to come out um i think in that 2019 year so uh i think he has a chance you know to transition as a, as a corner at the next level, I know, you know, I'm not a scout. I just, you know, I just kind of call it like I see it as, as what I've seen over the years, but I think, you know, definitely the scouts probably want to see if he can play free safety. Cause here's the thing. It's not, it's not whether or not he can play corner at the next level. It's whether or not there'll be enough depth for him to start there. Cause you got to think when you start getting into the ratio talk and all the, all of that stuff, it's, it starts to, you know, it starts to really go down as, okay, well, who's going to back him up? Because if he goes down, we got to play a Canadian in that spot. So that's kind of the unfortunate thing of how it is. At least I think right now, I don't think there's enough high quality level corners that are Canadian in the CFL right now. I think there's a lot of guys that, you know, can play the safety position, play the Sam position, can fill in for games at, you know, the half or, or corner if someone goes down. But I think for him, that's the only, that's the only thing he's battling. He's not really battling anything he can control. Um, but I think, Four five one speed laser is going to transition at any position, um, and you know I've seen his tape. He comes down and he hits people, uh, which is you know something you like to see. You, usually, usually when you see a corner, they don't real they're not as big you know physical wise. They don't like to hit as much. But I mean, this guy was coming down and just like tattooing guys when they catch slant routes and hitch routes and you know that type of thing. And then he's also covering. I've seen him play in in the halfback position, and you know covering fade routes picking off, you know, Laval quarterbacks in the end zone, tackling guys like Kevin Mitel. Uh So it, it's one of those things where I think he'll have great success at the next level for sure. Obviously, he'll have to crack the special teams, um, you know, I guess circuit as, as most guys have to do. Um, but I think he has, has a definitely a big shot of, of for sure. I don't see why he wouldn't be a first round pick, if not, you know, a second round pick in, in that respect, because you don't see very many Canadian DBs that can run four or five and play all over the field if he can play safety that's kind of the cherry on top really if he can command a defense and understand how to play in the post and make plays there then you can play anywhere on the field um you know from that aspect so i think he has a good chance of getting picked relatively high and i was happy to see uh you know just a, a db you know plug you know to my heart uh you know see a db have success at the combine and and uh you know just show showcase what he did that day and you mentioned the obviously the cherry on top is if he can play safety um, as a safety yourself uh, in terms of the speed. I know with the waggle, it, it's a little different than than other football leagues where you kind of don't have that motion of the receiver kind of coming at you. But is this that much of a plus ability when you're when you're playing corner or would you, as you mentioned, kind of prefer to see him at safety where he can use that speed, kind of play that center field role if he's not afraid to hit. Um, as a corner, like is is a four five one speed when the receiver get, kind of gets that head start on you? Is it is it that impactful, or are there other qualities that that you'd like to see out of corners versus with the safety? If he's willing to hit and he runs a four five one, that's that's kind of all you, all you need. Obviously, there's more to that, but if he's willing to do those two things, then then he's got a really great start at the safety position. Yeah, I, I see the the thing for me is like at least for when he's playing corner most of the time he's not going to really have to cover, you know, the waggle or anything like that. So, uh, you know, it'll be a few and far between. He'll get, you know, maybe a couple plays a game if he does. But I mean, personally, yeah, like as a safety, I would love to see him back there, you know, in the post being able to have that, you know, free range. It, one of the other things is how does he translate um, you know, that speed when he's in pads and full gear and uh, yeah, you see at the combine, it's a little bit different once you get in to, you know, the pro ranks, cause that speed is just a little bit more. Um, and, and the confidence and all, all the other things that go into playing football. But I think, I think if he can play safety and he did at Syracuse, so I don't see why he wouldn't be able to at this next level, um, and utilize that speed that he has and that range. I mean, again, we're talking about a guy that I think what he measured in at like six foot, 200 pounds. So that's not your, I mean, 
I'm I'm five nine, so <laughs> let's let's. I mean, yeah, like I'll be five eleven with all my gear on and stuff like that, and cleats, you know, helmet on. But uh, you know, that's one of those rare type of you know genetic breeds over six foot. Um, you know, that guys like you know, I think Chris Jones likes to see um, from that end. So maybe maybe he's a number one pick, uh, and he and he goes and plays safety for the uh, for the Edmonton Elks. I don't know. I don't. I, I can't, you know, I don't, I don't get into that stuff as much. I know there's a lot of guys that put a lot of effort and time into that. So I won't comment too far on that. But again, I think, I think he is one of those guys where I would like to see him play safety. And I know, I know all the coaches are thinking that too. Um, again, the, the problem with the corner thing is there's just not enough depth yet. Um, there's not enough quality Canadian corners that are in the CFL right now. And I think it'll continue to grow with guys like, you know, you got guys like LeBros now that are coming in the league. Um, maybe he goes to a Winnipeg and now Tyrell Ford and him are playing, are playing corner together or, or backing each other up or, or however it goes. But now you have that depth and now that's getting built around the league. So I think all in all, um, you know, guys like him that are coming into the league that are playing, that have played corner. I mean, he's played all over the field, right? Like, like we said, safety at Syracuse. I, when I was watching his tape, he's played boundary half field half boundary corner field corner those are i mean those are all interchangeable positions but to see a guy actually play and have success um is a totally different thing so i i'm interested to see kind of obviously where he gets picked um but at the end of the day kind of how how he comes into camp uh how he performs in those first couple preseason games and and who knows maybe he's a maybe he's a starter by the end of camp or maybe he's a you know playing that uh, like special teams type deal and, and earns his way onto the roster. And who knows, maybe he's starting at some point during the season, you know, playing those dime packages and stuff like that. Cause I think he's one of those guys that you, you know, you just can't keep off the field cause he's got too many, too many great qualities, um, you know, to just be on the sideline. Yeah. And I, obviously uh, a four five, one forty and a willingness to hit, as I mentioned, that's, those are kind of the intangible you can't coach speed i remember a, a football coach told me yeah. way back when and and especially at, at that size kind of in the defensive backfield that's that's someone you want to see and i agree i don't think we're going to be able or not us i don't think that that he'll be kept off the field for very long as long as he he kind of continues on the trajectory that he's shown at the combine and speaking right. of genetic freaks michael chris ike out of delaware state Woo. he also ran a 451 at 6'2", 225. I mean, this guy's a running back. I don't know the last time. William Stanback is probably the only comparable size-wise that, that's kind of in the right. league right now. And he, he's got probably, I think he's got five pounds on him. He's two inches shorter. So this is a, a specimen of a running back. As a, mm -hmm. as a safety, if he breaks through kind of those first two levels and it's <laughs> he's, he's trucking down right at you, like what does that do to you? from a mental standpoint is that obviously you'd rather kind of tackle a guy more your size but how beneficial is it to have a, a bruising running back especially a bruising running back who can run a four five one yeah i think um like like we kind of say always in football you're gonna learn you know who the boys are and who the men are at the end of the day uh you know from a personal standpoint the the size thing doesn't really I mean, for me, it doesn't it doesn't affect my you know mindset or you know, I'm you know scared to tackle this guy or anything like that. I think it it changes your approach on how you're going to tackle somebody because um, you can't tackle uh, a William Stanback versus you know let's say uh, you know I this is this kind of hard because I I don't play against James Butler, but those are two different types of guys. Like right, if you go if you go lower at you know Stanback, he's not really as likely to hurdle you. Mind you, he has hurdled people, but <laughs> You go low at, at JB, he may hurdle you, he may juke step you. You know, there's different approaches. And that's not that's not a knock on standbacks game or anything like that. He's a great running back, great cup champ, scored a huge touchdown in that game, um, and ran all over us in the playoffs. So uh I think there's just every guy has their skill sets at the end of the day, right? So when you got a guy like this with uh Michael Chris Ike, I think and, and the speed, I mean, I don't think I don't I don't know if Stanback's a four five one laser guy. He may have been back in the day, um, but to see 6'2", 225 running like that, I mean, you almost wonder, there's just so many things you're going to be able to do with a guy, and he's Canadian, right? There's n there's not very many running backs that are Canadian that are running that speed, that are that size, and, and can be a potential ratio-breaking position, you know, and now what we're seeing in the Canadian running back growth with guys like, you know, you got Brady Oliveira, who is now one of the highest-paid running backs 
in the league, if not probably ever in the league. I think he got a, a you know substantial contract there in Winnipeg, and, and rightfully so. But I think you'll start to see now more Canadian running backs, you know, want to be like him. I mean, now you got a whole, whole, I guess, generation in Winnipeg that is at least the young kids that are watching and they're saying, Oh, that's Brady Oliveira. He's from, you know, he's a local boy, that type of thing. Uh, and he's the hometown kid. Now you got a bunch of Canadian kids that are saying, I want to be just like Brady Oliveira, uh, on the weekends in the CFL or in the NFL. Um, and those that's, that's going to breed those type of kids. So I think definitely the evolution in, in the football in Canada is getting a lot better in terms of grassroots. So I think you'll only start to see this increase in talent in the league. And again, 6'2", 225, that's, I, I heard I heard he had nothing but a great week at the combine and, and all his testing and all that. But when he gets the pads on, I you know, I watched some of his Delaware State film and, you know, he's just, he's running dudes over. Uh, he's carrying guys. It's taken 11 guys to tackle him down there. Now it's going to probably take 12. <laughs> you know, you would hope <laughs> if he's on my team, if he's on my team, I hope it takes 12. Um, but, uh, you know, any, any, anything like that, that you start to see uh, that work ethic that a guy like that has, it, it just kind of, it's the complete package. And, you know, obviously I don't know how he interviewed or anything like that, but you just see, you just see the guy and the, the raw talent that he has. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting to see where he'll fit. Um, kind of come draft, come the season. And again, it's it's one of those rites of passage too. You know, he's probably going to have to play special teams uh, to get on a roster if he's not starting right away. But I think once he gets the reins in whatever organization he's in, uh, I think we could, we could see him having success, not only as a running back, but as a pass catcher out of the backfield too. Um, you know, you don't have four five one speed and not use that waggle a few times on a on a poor linebacker that is isn't isn't ready for that or or uh, you know just isn't isn't expecting that type of speed from a guy like that. So I think it'll be interesting to see once uh, once he's in camp how he performs and uh, how he is once the lights are on. Yeah, and you you kind of touched on it when we were talking about Benjamin Labros about Canadian corners and obviously with uh, Brady Oliveira and Michael Chris Ike the conversation is, okay, well, this is a, a ratio breaker in the backfield. You have a bell cow who's also Canadian. How important or how much of an advantage is it to have a national guy in positions like running back in positions like cornerback? Obviously, Trey Ford uh, was the Canadian quarterback that everyone was talking about, Nathan Rourke before him. What advantage does that give you? And and why is it so such a ratio breaker to have a national guy in in those kind of positions that we, you often see so dominated by Americans. Right. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things, obviously, like, like you were saying is just, those are positions that from at least just the last 10 years, let's say have been American dominated positions and you just don't expect Canadians to be able to play. I mean, probably let's, I mean, I don't know if I go far as far as back as like 10, 10 years ago, but 10 years ago was there were Canadian running backs as um, available as they are now in terms of like high talent guys. I mean, I know, I know you have your one-off guys that, you know, were on teams and I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comments and someone will say there were nine starting Canadian running backs in 2007 <laughs> or something like that. But uh, you know, my, my CFL knowledge is obviously always continuing to grow in the historical aspect. But I think when you have guys that can play those American dominated positions and not only just play them, but play them at an extremely high level, make plays and almost look not out of place uh it just gives coaches that confidence to say hey you know what like we saw you, we've seen you do it in practice we've seen you make the plays there um now we're going to put you there and now we can now we can put an american at a different position that predominantly hasn't been able to play an american right you, you look at that aspect too um you know when that when the ratio gets it's really a big chess game at the end of the day when that ratio gets flipped around you know for for us a lot, it was, you know, two Canadians on defense and five on offense. So kind of how, how ours was shuffled around most of the time last year was the free safety, one of our D linemen. I think we had three offensive linemen and sometimes two Canadian receivers, um, sometimes only one Canadian receiver, depending on, you know, how the, how the ratio worked that week because we had, you know, Sean Thomas Erlington as a running back who could come in and, and make those uh, make those starts to fill that, that ratio spot. So... I think 
at the end of the day, no team is going to say no to having that flexibility to be able to play a Canadian at a different position because it definitely takes a little bit of the stress off. Again, if a guy gets injured or goes down, you know, you can shuffle, you know, a guy from like, you know, myself, like Tunde from free safety to Sam or to halfback and we can get through a game and, and, and still not look out of place. Um, and a lot of that does come down to the coaching and the understanding of, you know, scheme and stuff like that from like an offense and defensive playbook standpoint. But I think you'll just start to see that more and more with, with the crop of talent each year. I mean, I like, I heard it a few times this, this past week and I even thought it to myself kind of before anyone was saying it, but like this, this year's CFL, like like Canadian talent group that's coming in the draft is, is probably one of the highest it's ever been um, in recent years. I mean, even with the amount of guys that are going to the NFL or getting NFL looks from U sports. So um, yeah, I, I mean, you can't, you can't be nothing but happy to see Canadians growing in the league uh, and the Canadian talent level increasing. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the Canadian seeing Canadian talent from your hometown, whether it's a guy who grew up in Calgary, went to UFC, plays with the Stamps, a guy who grew up in Vancouver, plays for the Lions, like that sort of stuff is what gets Adam, Pee Wee, Midget, those kind of of players in that age group to say, you know what, like the CFL, the CFL is something I want to do, and and when that's the goal in mind, as opposed to. Um, everyone when they were younger in my age group was, Oh, I'm going to the NFL. I'm going to be on the Dallas Cowboys and, and growing the the Canadian game is something that's so important. And obviously, obviously what we're trying to do and, and having yeah. those, those grassroots and next level kids seeing guys, Oh, the Canadian guys can run a four five one as well. Whereas like you mentioned back in, in 2007, assuming there weren't nine starting Canadian running backs, mm -hmm. it wasn't as prevalent to see, these homegrown Canadian guys. And and I think right. as we kind of got into the early 2010s, when you started to see, see more Canadians um, and more of these like uber talented Canadians, now we're starting to see the kids from those days coming up to the combine. And, and now we have the most talented group of, of Canadians that, that we've ever had kind of going into the CFL draft. So I think, right. like you mentioned, I think it's going to continue to grow. Um, and speaking of growing, you did some uh, promo for Behind the Visor. You did some growing of our own podcast, and uh, you were a guest on the Waggle this week. So, what was uh, what was it like being a guest on the the CFL's premier podcast? For now, for now, we'll say that for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For now, they actually that was one of the things they said. Um, you know, DB Donovan Bennett. Uh, you know, hit one of his things was like, oh. For I think I think kind of how he started it out, and I can't remember exactly, uh, but was along in the lines of that. You know behind the visor will eventually, you know, eventually take over our podcast. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I hope, you know, one day, one day we can be, you know, obviously the number one, number one in the CFL, but at the end of the day, as long as everybody's growing and, and the CFL name is growing, I think that's, I mean, that's our goal at the end of the day, but yeah, to be able to, I just, when I got that message to be like kind of invited onto the podcast, I was, I won't say like surprised, but it was just like, Oh man, this is kind of like, this is cool. Like I didn't, I, I actually listen to the podcast quite a bit, um, you know, in the off season, a little bit during the year when I can. Um, so just to be like, get, get that invite on there um, and be able to go on there and just kind of talk about obviously the last season that I had um, kind of that, that breakout season um, share a little bit about kind of our, our plans with the podcast and stuff like that. I think it, it was, it was, it was really a cool thing um, and just kind of obviously bring something like this, like what we're doing just more to life, right? Like you, you, you go on, it's like going on, uh, like we're, we're obviously the small, we're the small, small potato show right now. And, you know, we're going on like, you know, I don't know when I was a kid, I always like the today show is always like a cool thing to me. Cause my parents are always playing it in the morning. Um, you know that, I mean, that's, I'm going back way back, like 2004 or five when that was on before I would go to school, but I would always see, you know, they would have an NFL player on there or some sort of like you know, famous person during the week. So it, it, it kind of brought me to like one of those moments, like, oh man, we're, we're at like the, the top of the top right now. So that was a really cool experience. And, uh, you know, just to, just to chop it up with those guys and, and, uh, you know, just share a little bit on, on our plans with behind the visor and, and their, their willingness to kind of help us out and, and, uh, you know, just, just promote the podcast for us. I think that's, that's just an awesome thing in itself. And you love to see when the league promotes, you know, player led things and player led initiatives. So, uh, was super appreciative and grateful to, 
to be on that show. And ho hopefully they'll have me on uh, in a couple months. Maybe, maybe I just continue to make plays and uh, continue to grow this podcast. And who knows, maybe, maybe actually maybe they'll be on our show. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And you, uh, I mean, they interviewed you, obviously, we have some uh, some plans in mind, so we'll be we'll be teasing some interviews kind of coming up and and moving forward. Joel was the first one; it's not going to be the last one. So uh, yeah. keep your eyes peeled for for more CFL players in uh, being interviewed on behind the visor and and kind of getting that that in depth look at at Stavros and uh, and how he interacts with maybe some teammates, some teammates that eat dry cereal. I I, I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to green light those guys coming on just because of. Uh, just because of those habits and and also thank you to the waggle um obviously any promo is helpful especially from the the premier cfl podcast and make sure after you finish this episode uh you can go check out the waggle it's on spotify it's on apple music kind of wherever you get your podcasts um mm. it actually released on wednesday this is coming out on thursday so um once you finish this go check them out and uh without further ado uh, obviously because you're going to finish this, you won't get this announcement on the waggle, but Stavros, I, I heard some, uh, some partnerships are going down on, uh, behind the visor and it's only episode two. You want to chat a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's only episode two. And, uh, I know we kind of hinted at it a little bit last in last week's episode, but it's, it's finally official. Our, uh, our upper deck partnership, uh, with behind the visor is, for the most part, live right now. I'll actually take it over to our card break cam, so we can go a little bit over of kind of what's going to happen these next couple of weeks and what we're going to do. So let's let's go over there right now and and have a little bit of fun. All righty. So we are Luca. Can you hear me? Are we are we are we clear? Oh, we're we're loud and clear. We're live with the upper deck cam. Live with the upper deck. So we got we got the thumbs up here, all that good stuff. So um, I mean, obviously, like some of you had seen. Uh, in last week's episode, we kind of went through my collection and just saw everything that that had to offer. Luca was trying to steal my Kamar Jordan uh, jersey swatch card. I'm in the I process of it. it. I, yeah, yeah. He's I been, got uh, some inside spies down, down yeah. in uh, California. <laughs> yeah, he's he's throwing out some uh, some egregious bids. I think I think he's in the thousand dollar range right now trying to get that <laughs> card. But that's neither here nor there. We got these awesome card boxes from upper deck right now um just some cool stuff right now that they're making again a, a huge shout out to them for uh just just being being so willing to partner with us in this podcast and bring you guys some cool content on their cards and and some potential giveaways that we are getting ready to do i know it's easter weekend is coming up maybe what we could do is give away some packs for free this weekend uh to some of you guys we'll we'll figure that out i think uh i'll let i'll let luca determine kind of how we're going to do that maybe we'll make some posts on our on our instagram page and stuff like that but we'll these have are just to some... chat with the easter bunny to just make sure it's not infringing on uh on oh, any yeah. gifts that that he's giving away but i think we can definitely give some packs away this easter weekend and then obviously next week i'll let stavros kind of get into the details but next week it's not just going to be a couple packs being given away Oh, oh yeah. I think, um, I think they don't make an Easter egg big enough to, I mean, they might, it's going to have to be a giant Easter egg to put this thing in there. So maybe we have to follow those rules. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. We'll be doing, you know, we got the hobby boxes here. We got the SP game used, jer uh, you know, Jersey swatches and autos. These are like, this box is very rare. Uh, you got, you know, kind of your, I'll kind of read off kind of some of the stuff you got in here, but you got your autograph and memorabilia autograph cards. Those are three and one uh, packs. You got your CFL autos. You got your CFL prowess autographs, the gold parallels, the CFL auto jerseys, CFL auto patches. Basically, this is like your creme de la creme pack right here. These are going to be very grail. The holy grail of packs. I think, you know, we'll have some cool stuff in there. And then we'll also be doing some hobby box pack breaks. I mean, this is just your standard, you know, standard box with your base stuff. There's three hits per box. Um, and yeah, we're just going to have some fun with this stuff. I think over the next couple of weeks, we'll start doing these breaks on the pod. Um, and we will have the, we'll have a way for you to purchase your spot. Um, like I said, they're, they're for the most part going to be free. All you got to do is pay for shipping. This giveaway will just be shipping, no, no cost or anything other than that included. Um, but in the weeks coming, 
It'll be live on my website, stavroscatsandtonis.com. If that's too much for you to type in, just go to any of our social accounts, click on the link in the bio. You'll find the website, you know, right there. But it, it's going to be fun. We'll, 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 we'll start this off. They're going to be like a dollar or two dollars for you to get in and get your spot in the, in the initial pack breaks. And then eventually what we'll start doing is we'll start breaking full boxes. I don't know, Luca, what do you think? Should we start doing the the team spots or, or how do you, or should we do random teams? How do you think we should go about doing these breaks once we get into it? I think the team team spots are, are probably going to be what, what the people want. I can't yeah. imagine a, uh, a uh, Ty Cats fan being too thrilled when when he gets randomly assigned to the Argos and, and <laughs> similar with the Stamps fan that gets randomly assigned to the Elks. So yeah, uh, I think we'll, we'll probably let let the people pick their teams. But if the supply and demand, we might have to end up doing random randomization if uh, if enough people want a certain team. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's I think the team thing is the way to go, especially with these CFL packs, and it gives people enough enough slots to you know get their get their team there's definitely i think i feel like there's there's got to be every team in every single pack except probably these ones these will be like those you know you're a little bit more difficult to hit a team so maybe we can we can figure out a little bit something different but again it's really all about just having fun growing the hobby for our, our great cfl fans you'll get you'll get a nice little uh plastic top loader um, that your card will go in before it gets shipped off in a nice little penny sleeve. So everything is nice and safe and protected um, for that shipping. So, uh, yeah, super excited to bring that to you guys. Again, just stay tuned to our social accounts. Um, stay stay tuned to my website as well because that's where you'll be able to order everything. It's going to be – it's very professional. You know, this is going to look – this is going to look like an Amazon, Amazon store when you get there. You know, you're going to be able to purchase what you want. I don't know how quick the shipping will be for my Canadian, uh, my Canadian orders out there, but we're gonna do we're gonna do as, as do it as fast as we can. Um, but again, it, it's all about having fun, growing this hobby um, in the league, and just building the hype around these CFL trading cards. I don't, I, Luke. What do you think? Do you think we could pull in some of these SP game used some some expensive cards, maybe, or maybe just drive up the price of the cards maybe i don't know maybe that's that's what happens we, we build up the hype someone wants a geno lewis patch and it's a hundred dollar card maybe i don't know maybe it's more than that i think we'll be able to uh to get some people into the hobby as as in my experience it's been uh once you get one card you're kind of you're kind of stuck and and the hobby has you in its grasp so um i i i think the more people in the hobby the better these cards are obviously incredible as as we saw last week kind of with with Stavros's collection but um it's just, it's a serious hobby and and once you get into it it's it's hard to get out and you just kind of want more patch cards and more autographed cards and more serial numbered cards so yes um yes there will be yes. lots of cards of of the CFL's elite there will be stories i'm sure that Stavros has with with most of the guys on these cards and and yeah like Stavros mentioned just just building the hobby and and growing the the CFL trading card game and obviously would be remiss without, without giving a big thank you to upper deck. Um, they're obviously supporting the pod even on episode two. So, so they see something in, in behind the visor moving forward. And uh, yeah, obviously the, all the giveaways for now, kind of this Easter weekend giveaway, as long as we clear it with the Easter bunny, that'll be on uh, the Instagram and social. That's both um, behind the visor pod. So, uh, just ensure that you're you're following on that and and kind of keeping track of of when we'll be posting that. Um, that stuff will kind of be like comment, tag a friend, share on your story, that sort of stuff. No, uh, nothing too crazy that you have to do. It's it's simply kind of getting our name out there and and if share the podcast and if you enjoy, I would hope that you'd want to share the podcast. And there's a, there's a good chance you get rewarded out of it. So it sounds like a a win 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 all around, but. Again, thank you to Upper Deck. Uh, they've been awesome to work with so far and, and looking forward to starting these breaks next week. Yeah, yeah, no, I think if there's any, if there's a time to get into it, it's it's get in now because we're on, you know, the ground, the ground floor in terms of these giveaways. Right now it's starting for free, just the shipping. And then it's, you know, those spots are, there's, they're, they're, we're only going to break more and more packs. So those spots will obviously become a little bit more limited. 
a little bit more expensive, but still affordable for all, all our fans out there. Um, so you guys can, can get in and, and get some awesome cards. So again, I'm, I'm super excited. I wish I could, I'm, I know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to open these cards and I'm going to see them and I'm be like, oh, I don't want to give this card away, <laughs> but for the hobby and for the sake of the CFL fans, I promise I will not switch out any of these cards, no matter <laughs> how valuable we are going to be team integrity over here. But again, I think it's just going to be a super fun thing uh, that we're able to bring to the pod. Uh, and again, just, you know, like, like Luca was saying, a huge shout out to upper deck uh, and this partnership that they have with us. And we're just going to continue to grow it, grow the love of the CFL game with not only the upper deck segment, but the entire podcast as well. Um, we just want to, again, Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. Hope you guys had some fun. If you're watching the video version, if you're watching the audio version, I hope, I hope you were having fun as well, but driving safe if you were driving. Um, and if we got you to where you were going on your commute today, awesome. That's what our goal was. Um, again, check this out anywhere you get your, your podcast on the audio version, Spotify, Apple, Google, any of that good stuff. And then again, if you are not driving, again, Please don't drive and, and watch this podcast. We want everyone to be safe. Um, if you are watching, it is on YouTube exclusively, the video version uh, on my YouTube channel, Stavros, Cats and Tonus, under the podcast section behind the visor. Again, Luca, it was a pleasure as always. I'm looking forward to next week already and this giveaway that we got, the pack breaks that we got in the future. We're just going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, that was a fun time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as Stavros mentioned, it's a bit of a shorter one this week. Obviously, we'll uh, people are going to be busy with family stuff going on. It's a long weekend, maybe not as much time for podcasting. So uh, no interview this week. We'll be back with them next week and, and moving forward, getting all those uh, CFL names that you so eagerly want to hear from. And uh, yeah, I mean, YouTube, Spotify, Apple for the podcast, Instagram and, and Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it um at behind the visor that'll be where the giveaway is um it's an easter weekend giveaway we hope you have a, a great long weekend and a happy easter if you celebrate it otherwise really appreciate you tuning in episode two is in the books and uh we'll be right back for episode three <laughs>